Come back to be brief. Sort of hush-hush job. Thought you wouldn't mind if I just called in this evening to say hail and farewell? No, of course not. Come in. You look ill, Carol. I'm all right. I ran into Beryl. She seemed in an odd sort of mood. I gather she isn't living with you any longer. No. No, she left soon after you went away. Hmm. Heard from Stephen yet? Oh, yes, I've heard from Stephen. What's he say? That our marriage is all washed up. What? He got a letter accusing me of having an affair with you. Carol, I... But who? Beryl. I see. And he actually believed it? Yes. I'll write back myself and tell him the whole thing is a deliberate, malicious lie. What for? What for? You don't want Stephen to go on thinking this, do you? I don't care what he thinks now. Carol, you mustn't take it like that. Stephen's a prisoner of war. He... If you were in his place, would you pay two seconds' attention to a poison pen letter? I don't know. I've never been in love before. Being in love meant that you trusted each other completely. All the things he said. I believed every word. It killed my love for him. Caroline, my darling, I can't bear to see you cry. <laughs> Don't forget to drop us a line, dear, if there's anything you want. I try to get used to it, but I still can't believe it. We were so much in love. Uh, it's a mystery to me. He's a right to change his mind, I suppose. Could it be that he doesn't think it's fair to make Elspeth wait on and on? Do you think it might be that? <laughs> no. I don't think David's the kind to make that sort of sacrifice for that sort of reason. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Goodbye, Goodbye my darling. Goodbye, my darling. The photograph I'm sending makes me look absurdly young. But I'm no longer young. The one of Janet, that funny expression's only shyness, not stumpy. I can see her now through the window, telling her grandfather how to plant tomatoes. I'm worried about her teeth. Father thinks she should wear one of those wire things. And that hulking boy is Desmond, nine years old yesterday. The village is livelier than it's ever been. We have a large contingent of evacuees and a lot of other visitors that come and go. Everything's changed and yet nothing's changed. There's the whistle of the 435. Half an hour late as usual. Mrs. Truscott still sells her homemade toffee, though where she manages to get the sugar from, I can't imagine. And there's still cricket on 